out of the blue of the western sky comes Sky King. As we say here in the West. Hey, happy Friday. You know, I had to uh, cut my crew off. Uh, we were in the middle of a, a conversation. I looked up and it was zero, 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 zero. I'm like, well, oh, crap, we're on <laughs> or we should be on. <clears throat> so welcome to Classic Television Smackdown, ladies and gentlemen, where each and every, every other Friday, uh, we talk about things, uh, live action things that we or shows that we grew up with. Um, hopefully that you guys remember. If I'm a little blurry or whatever, it's because I didn't set up my green screen behind me, and uh, that usually gets rid of the blur. I uh, want to say happy Friday to our classic television SmackDown team, Rosemarie Rose and Jerome Connor. Hey! <laughs> Sorry, Kermit Flail. Okay, now here is an indication of diehard – TV slash movie fan, when you've seen things probably a billion times and it's on television again, you run to see it again. You know what's going to happen. You've seen it. What am I talking about? Well, on Turner Classic Movie right now, at this moment, is the original Planet of the Apes. And it's like, oh, you I'm damn like, dirty apes. Damn right. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I can see this anytime. Why am I so anxious that it's on as we speak? I, 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 I don't understand. I don't understand. But um, it, 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 it's on now. So hopefully if you guys are watching us now, um, I'm having a problem logging into my Facebook. Uh, if you guys are on to make sure we're up and running. Hopefully I'll. Oh, I'm on. OK, sorry about that. Uh, hopefully our crew can tune in. And watch us down as we speak. Uh, this is, like I said, classic television SmackDown. Uh, we normally do, just like our Saturday morning cartoon show, we normally do what we call, uh, what, what did I name this last week? Uh, something garbage. Housekeeping. Uh, housekeeping. Housekeeping. But I, I, I think I changed it, though, and wanted to kind of make it like, I don't know, TV garbage or, I don't know, we'll, we'll come up with the original name. If you guys can come up with the original name, please, please let us know. Uh, hello to everyone. Hey, Mike, how you doing, brother? Good to see you. Well, this is what I call a, I don't know how often this runs. Somebody's going to have to have to help me, but this is our trifecta. And what happens, <laughs> in our tri what happens during our trifecta is that one of the hosts, one of the hosts has to basically do at least three shows in a row. Three show, there is a weekend where one of these hosts are doing at least three shows back to back during the weekend. And uh, the lucky dog <coughs> this time <laughs> happens to be Rose. <coughs> Rose is hosting this show. Uh, she's hosting tomorrow morning show and she's hosting tomorrow evening's show. So Rose, I'm 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 wondering how how you doing? Are you hanging in there? Well, if Rachel gets the clips done for <laughs> the show, we'll be fine. <laughs> She's working yeah. on it. Uh, <laughs> well, I think that's just another <coughs> another good reason. <clears throat> Excuse me for coughing. I don't know what's going on. Excuse me, I have to take more medicine. beer. But you know. Um, it takes a long time to put these shows together. So, you know, welcome, uh, welcome to my when world. Mark, when Mark, when I started Roses in Reactions, Mark said to me, Well, now that you know how to edit, you can edit your own clips for <laughs> Television Smackdown and, yes. and Saturday morning cartoons. So, hey. I don't need to give him the bare list like I used to. You and are like my. Download. You are like. <laughs> You are like my child, where I can say, wait till you get children of your own. 
You know, so, welcome. So, yeah, to... so you have to find the clips. Then you have to, and then you have to download them. Then you have to yeah. edit them, and to get really frustrated in the editing yes, process. Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Yes. So dear. yes, and these um, two, these two were. I I really went in depth with both of these shows, so yeah. it took a little bit longer on both, the, it, especially it, it, tomorrow's morning show. Took longer actually. Wait a minute, you said both. You mean the three of them? No, Rachel's yeah. doing the third the one. The third one, Rachel's oh. working on. So, and you did yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, tonight, tonight's, tonight's took a while. I did that on Sunday. I was like, oh, right. I'm, I'm good. I got it all done on Sunday. <clears throat> yeah. Then this I is, worked uh, on this Saturday morning cartoons one, and that just five hours. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, especially when some of those, the, the, the research is just brutal. The research is brutal. Everything that we, uh, well, now you know what I go through uh, to put together you guys' shows. Uh, when you send me clips, and I do a little extra work, of course, uh, while doing it, yes, it, there is work involved. But uh, seeing that this is your show, uh, yep. for today, we're going to go ahead and um, let you have the mantle here and uh, tell us a little bit about what tonight's classic television smackdown is all about. Hi, everybody. Um, I wanted to work on a show like this for a while. Um, I was a huge fan of Soap growing up. It was a show that was totally different from anything else I'd seen on television at the time. I was a little kid, and even I understood that the themes were not something that were on TV every day. I was watch used to watching shows like Happy Days and, you know, Leave it to Beaver, Brady Bunch, where everything is all tied nice and, nice and neat. No, no controversy, no nothing. But then Soap came along, and I, I found out some stuff about this show, you know, that's quite interesting. Um, so we're going to share that tonight. I wanted to actually do a whole show on Soap, but there's just really not a lot. I mean, I could probably talk an hour about it, but I decided what I'm going to do is um, put together this show, including Soap, uh, with with regard to the producers and the writers, which was um, um, Thomas Witt and Harris. Okay, Susan Harris. Um, Susan Harris, you, that name might sound familiar to you uh, because um, she had a huge hit in the 1980s called The Golden Girls, but we're not going there today. We're going to go... I'm going to take a step back, way back to the beginnings of uh, Whit Harris um, Thomas Productions. And it all started with um, Whit and Thomas. They worked on a movie, a TV movie together originally, and that's how they met. Um, <clears throat> it's a movie that you might be familiar with or you probably heard about, which is called Brian's Song. Uh, it, it was a huge deal at the time about the life of uh, football player Brian Piccolo and his best friend. Um, uh, just, uh, I don't remember seeing that as a kid because I think it came out in 1971 and I was just born. But the, this, oh my God. this movie was so well known. And it, that, that, I mean, they've talked about it like in, in, in classes that I attended in college and everything. Hey, it had, it had grown men crying at the end. So... I I saw it live. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just like, wow, Billy D. Williams is just like, I remember, you know, to me, he's, you know, just, um, you know, Empire Strikes Back, Lando Calrissian, you know, but he, I'm like, wow, he looks, he's so much younger. And, and look, Colt he's 45. You know, he, he, uh, he's, he did, you know, well, I almost picked some clips from that, but I didn't because I was like, well, you know, it's a movie and I really just want to stick with the, their sit sitcoms, but that's how they got together. Okay. Um, so they decided to make um, a production company. And um, Tony Thomas um, is related to Danny Thomas. So you're going to see some Danny Thomas stuff come up. Uh, he, he was always a, a part of this uh, production early on. Uh, and um, But we're going to go on to their first show that they did. Okay. The first show that they put together... Uh, was a show called Faye, and it starred Lee Grant. Now, Lee Grant 
that is she's been in everything okay the the woman's been around for a very long time very well known she's in valley of the dolls she was uh huge on peyton place um she's gone on to play on mahal and drive uh she was in barnaby jones and uh every uh show in the 70s and 80s you can think of i think love boat i mean she's just everywhere um but she got her own series and she was like so excited about it because the show was different it was you know considered groundbreaking it was um sort of like one day at a time but kind of like more like on the adult more adult than in sitcom okay uh lee grant she played faye stewart she was a divorced woman in san francisco uh trying to make a new life for herself and um she uh talks a lot to her best friend played by audra lindley which if that name sounds familiar you probably know her best from three's company but she was around a long time before that um so the show um was on nbc and it started out really good it had really good ratings the first couple of weeks but then all of a sudden it dropped and <clears throat> there was a reason for that it's called time slots and the children's hour back in the 70s and for whatever reason nbc thought it in its brilliance to put this show at an early children's hour slot and so the themes about a divorced woman which was like really ooh, taboo back then <clears throat> and what they were trying to talk about um th the scripts um kept coming back and they were like change this change this change this and because the show couldn't be done the way that they really wanted it to because of all the um, editing, it, it started dropping the ratings like real quick. It took a real big nosedive. And so um, Lee Grant, <laughs> she came into work and it was just like, uh, the show's done. There's no more show. And she was already slotted that night to go on to Johnny Carson to discuss the show. She, you know, mm -hmm. it was, you know, it was a new show. She was going to go on. So she went to the Johnny Carson show, and but instead of you know talking about oh this is my new series, she had to go on and tell them that it was canceled, and she was so upset about it uh, that she she bad mouthed uh, the um, head of ABC at the time, uh, Marvin Antonowski, and she ended up giving the middle finger live on television because she was so pissed off that her show was canceled. <laughs> But we're going to go ahead now and show the, oh, I think I have the opening for Faye, which is clip number one. Oh, come on. We want the Carson clip. I wish I had it. <laughs> okay. Are we ready for the clip now? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead with okay. that clip. KNBC Los Angeles. Oh, oh that's it. Yeah. My feet on the ground Pick them up while it's spinning round Where can it go? Who can know? I love the exterior shots of the So this is when you could afford to live in San Francisco. Uh, yes, apparently so, you know, <laughs> but, but the Tanners did too on uh, full house, you know, they, they lived in San Francisco, but there was like, but three adults, you know, paying the rent or whatever, you yeah. know, 
Oh. You notice, you notice in, in, in the 60s and the 70s, whenever they're in San Francisco, it's always implied everybody lives near Chinatown. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Hey, uh, my my uh, the monster wants to make a, uh, a comment. Is is that okay? The, sure. The monster. Okay. All right, monster. What do you have to say? Oh. <laughs> is that your name for it? The monster. The monster. Yes. There's the uh, speed skating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, my uh, wife's watching biathlon tonight. A new addition to uh, StreamYard. They 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 seem to be putting up a, a lot of fancy little add-ons and whatever. And this is additional camera rows for you to know. Oh um, wow! Yes. So it, in the share tab at the bottom there, you click on that, and it'll give you an option. So I literally have two cameras set up. Uh, one of course of me, and then of course the monster, and of course you can drop it out. So um, back to your beautiful. You know what? I had a little bit of a crush on Faye. Uh, Did you see the show? Did you watch it? Never saw this show before in my life. I don't know what the <laughs> hell I just watched. I, I, I really don't know, but I thought I was going to sleep. But uh, she is very, she's an attractive uh, woman. She always has been. I remember her in movies, I think. I think she starred with John Wayne in a few movies. and She was in some horror films in the 70s. Yes, she, yes, yeah, if you look yes. at her list, she's been in a lot of stuff. She was, she was in Omen 2, I think. There we go. Well, That's where I remember her from. Omen 2. Ah. Wasn't Omen she in the two. original Omen or, or something? Maybe no, she was in so. the original. I Lee Remick. I, I think it was Lee Remick. Yeah, right, yeah, it was Lee Remick. It, it was. Yeah. Oh my God, I'm um, so old. Cool. Oh. I've got an interview um, briefly uh, with Lee Grant to discuss what happened with Faye. So okay. go ahead and run that clip. Okay, let me get this one. On this very here. interesting. Oh, she was in Valley of the Dolls. Ooh, was she yes, really? She was. Yes. Huh. She was probably a doll. It <laughs> was the first um, uh, sitcom that um, Tony Thomas and Paul Witt did, and Paul Witt's wife, Susan, who is an absolutely extraordinary writer. Susan Harris. Susan Harris wrote Faye. What was it about? Uh, it was, you know, way ahead of its time. It was uh, a, a woman who, you know, divorced and uh, was working and it, it was the first it, it was like the the next thing to that girl it was the woman whose marriage was over and who did not want to be married anymore and who had a grown daughter and who had a job and how she fared, you know, in the workplace. And uh, it was unfortunately put in like the children's hour. They had uh, the children's early evening, early evening uh, mm -hmm. at that time because it would have just, you know, hit the roof if it had been put in the right time, but it wasn't. Okay, so so that's 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 Faye, and you know, this show is nearly impossible to find. Okay, I think I read this <coughs> episode uploaded somehow on the internet, but if you really want to see any of it, it's like archived at the Paley Center. They have a few episodes, and then uh, at the Library of Congress, they have a few. So, hmm. and that's that's where it's at. Okay. So. That is Faye. That is the first Paul Witt, Tony Thomas uh, show that came out. And then uh, the second one uh, 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 premiered in 1976, uh, which was called The Practice. Not to be confused with the right. one, uh, the, the law show. This yeah. is about a doctor's office. And it starred Danny Thomas. Okay? Imagine that. He, yeah. he plays Jules Bedford, a crusty, grumpy old doctor. And um, it's about him, you know, just 
trying to live his life and uh, in his family. And uh, I, he always has these guest stars on with their problems and issues. And so let's go ahead and play that clip. Marvin, we haven't seen you since last Thursday. Can we just get to the medicine? It may not be much time. <laughs> Don't ever keep me waiting like this. There's a lot of bad bacteria in this room. <laughs> How do you feel, Marvin? As well as can be expected. I'm holding my own. That's good. I'm nauseous. That's good. Are you going to write this down, or could, could you remember it all? Oh, I think we have most of it from the last time. <laughs> my blood is not good. My white count is up. Would you like another blood test? I think it's best. In the British Journal of Medicine this week, they went to great lengths to describe the frequency of failure of standard blood tests and the detection of elevated white counts. I, I, I didn't see that. Page 63. <laughs> Tell me, uh, Marvin, uh, uh, how, how is your, your heart this week? Is it going at all? I took my pulse just before I came here. Oh, oh. So how was it? Not good. May maybe I ought to give it a listen, huh? May I? Of course. <laughs> Three out of five ain't bad. Good. Not good. Very weak. Mm. <laughs> Marvin? Marvin? Did your heart stop? It's hard to say. My ears are shot. Now, uh, uh, nurse, I, I think you better take Marvin's blood pressure. I already took my pressure. You know, I think he's the only man in the world who could sue himself for malpractice. <laughs> I have never seen this show. Neither have I. I, I, it, I. It was on for two seasons. Very short second season, okay? Okay. On NBC, 27 episodes total, and two unaired. Okay, so wow. uh, I'm going to ask Jerome, because I know he knows the answer. Who's that nurse? Oh, yeah, well, well Mike already told us. It was Mother Nature. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's that's I missed it. Yes, it is. It's not nice to fool Mother Nature. That you know, I was cool. wondering. I'm looking at her and I'm going, "That's not Madge," you know. And it's <laughs> she well, played. She she did that for Chiffon Margarine from seventy one to seventy nine. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Wow, talk about job security, man. Oh, yeah. eight, eight she probably years. made more money doing that uh, Mother Nature than she did being on this show. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right, that's that's Shelly Fabre there. That's Shelly Fabre. Shelly, Shelly Fabre. I love Shelly Fabre. Oh, my God. I don't God. know Shelly Fabre. Oh, there she is. God. She's gorgeous. Yeah. Hey, uh, but the patient reminded me so much of someone else. I he, I, I think it might be David Brenner. Who's that? No. The comedian. Okay. He in the, in the beginning, he reminded me so much of Horseshack. <laughs> 
I'm not sure. I tried to find out if it was David Brenner, but I couldn't find I couldn't find that information out. Okay, so this yeah. is a oh, not him. six one. Okay, what was the character's like, no, what was the, not him? So what, okay. what was the character's name? I don't know. He's just a he was just know. a guest star on there. Uh, it's it's uh oh but Mike says of course it's not him. Okay. Um so I yeah, don't know who some, it was, but. yeah, at some point I said when I watched the clip, I said, No, that's not him after seeing another profile or as he continued talking, but he looked so much the same mannerisms, the same body style, body shape. And I'm like, is that Orshak? So that surprised me. Okay. So that was the practice. Yep. And so we're going to move on to the next one, which was super short lived, which is sad. Okay. Because I read the history behind this. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so I love Susan Day. Okay. Huge yeah. Susan Day fan since yeah. the Partridge family. Okay? Yeah. yeah. But if it, it you blink and you miss this one. Okay. It's called Loves Me, Loves Me Not. I blink. <laughs> it aired blink. on CBS for six episodes. <clears throat> Let's roll that opener and maybe we can six. find out how we could have fixed this. Maybe by the opening alone. So go ahead and run uh -oh. yeah, number four here. Your suspect film after the movie. Could we have it's, it looks a little like mad about you uh, we could have fixed it by not having the characters in a green like <laughs> you don't even get to see them they're in a little green frame yeah you can't hardly see yeah. them yeah and and and, and <clears throat> we could have a, a maybe that the song is very 70s okay I could but, have gotten rid of the cheesy mustache you know, yeah have, have, yeah mustache. Oh, yeah that's another thing yeah this the mustache yeah. but the show had issues of its own besides the opening credits Okay. If it looks if it looks like somebody rushed this last uh, in the in the in the last minute, it's because they did. Wait a minute, six episodes. Six episodes. Yeah, okay. that makes it a summer filler. Here's ha here's what happened. It was a mid season replacement. Yep. And they scrambled to get this on the air to compete with, believe it or not, Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley over at ABC. <laughs> They're like, we need we we need a show so about a young couple. <laughs> and they rushed, they, they they made Susan Harris rush the script. They rushed <clears throat> the filming of it. The, I, the, when, when you described it, it just dawned on me what show it reminds me of. They redid this type of show uh, in the 90s on Fox called Duet. Maybe Ooh. so. I haven't heard of that either. Yeah, but, it's an old show, but it ran for a while. Yeah, th this was S Susan's first show since Partridge Family. And she said that... They did not have time to develop their characters properly. They were, it, it was like, they filmed this in December. It was just r rushing the scripts, rushing the cast. And what they got was, uh, you know, she's, you know, she said there was no depth to it because of the way it was made. So canceled in six episodes, never to be seen again. Uh, you can only find the opening. I don't know who taped that. And put it on, uh, you know, it's it's surprising that was even found. Well, the fact that you found a, um, that, that Mark found a, a, a photo of this show. Really nice. I like the picture. Yeah, she's she's really cute. I think she really grew up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I really en enjoy Susan Day. I, I, I like the like movie she's been in. I liked L.A. Law. So, but together, I'll, 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 together. Guess I'll never, Never, yeah, never. I guess I'll never get to see that show, in you know, but it's probably, oh, I'm sure somebody somewhere has got a copy. You I'm know? not yeah. missing much. Apparently. Somebody's <laughs> in your lazy boy right now with their VHS VHS <laughs> tape, watching, you know, all loves six me, episodes. loves me not. <laughs> they're, they're binging. Started six the episodes. loves me, loves me not fan club. Yeah, that's that's amazing. Okay, so now we get to. Uh -oh. The first big hit uh -oh. that had some a lot a lot of controversy. 
I love classic <laughs> television. I love classic <laughs> television. We're, we're talking about soap. Okay. No, I, I love soap. Which ran from 77 to 1981. Okay. This show, this was on in my house every every time it was on and when they did the reruns on tbs we were watching it then too oh my god the controversy is at this show yes so we'll get into all of that um the show was created as a nighttime parody of daytime soaps um uh every season that it managed to stay on they had a 90 minute recap from the season before and I guess the recaps you can find on VHS, but unfortunately, when they, they did them to DVD, they 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 don't didn't put them on as extras. Um, this is a show that dealt with um, things like um, alien abductions, amnesia, yeah. cults, extramarital affairs, murder kidnapping, and um, gay people. Okay. No. Things that were oh never God. discussed, and, and mean, so so this that this show. Are you, are you serious? You mean British cigarettes? <laughs> oh my God! I'm okay. Okay, I got a confession to make about so. I was go a ahead, fan of the ventriloquist dummy. Oh, I, oh uh, I love them. <laughs> the big thing they would oh, yeah. they would always show up dressed alike, and then there was like what was it like four or five episodes where somebody had kidnapped him. Yeah. Okay, awesome. and it got funny because he would he he would come down or something with like a watermelon or instead of the dummy or something else. It was just hysterical. Yes, th this show this show did some things okay. that were very brilliant out of the box, and boy, did they make so many people angry! Even oh, the controversy okay. that you heard about this thing! So, um, okay. yeah, why don't we go ahead and play clip five, which is Tony Thomas talking about so? With pleasure. Thanks. Well, first of all, it was a, it was serialized at night. And I don't know that, that many were doing. The Mary Hartman was out there, had done something like it, uh, but uh, this uh, was serialized, and we were kind of we were putting in the spotlight the taboos, all of the taboos. Uh, and uh, I don't think other sh shows were featuring that. You know, it's, we were still doing those beginning, middle, and end. Uh, little Sally didn't get a good grade, and Dad has to go talk to the teacher stories, you know, kind of stories. And, and so w this was about uh, husbands fooling around on their wives and, and no. wives uh, fooling around on their husbands and no. finding out... Uh, that uh, uh, your son is gay. I mean, I think it was first gay prime time. I'm Billy Crystal. Sure. You know, the uh, yeah. stepfather walks in on his son in his mother's dress, and you know, <laughs> this was, this was causing a tremendous amount of outrage. And this girl who had a tremendous crush on her priest and was trying to seduce, not seduce him, seduce him, but tell her, tell her of her interest in the confessional booth i mean we were just it was groundbreaking <clears throat> taboo stuff i mean we argued with the network about boffing we could only use the, the word boff and we could only use it once we couldn't use it three times and i mean the promos now that i see on television the words that are in the promos are much more risque than we were ever allowed to get into the episodes it's like this is unbelievable <laughs> i mean the other day, night somebody was giving uh, someone the Italian the sign, uh, you know, giving them the arm sign uh, in a promo. And I was like, what? I couldn't do that. How come they didn't let me do that? <laughs> or, or, or. Okay, let's talk about the controversy before we go to the next clip, okay? In early March, 1977, ABC screened the first two episodes of Soap for executives. Uh, and 195 affiliate stations. Um, people were appalled by the show's <laughs> emphasis on sex and infidelity. 
<laughs> Two of the affiliates, neither in a major market, privately told ABC that the show was raunchy and the subject matter was unfit for television. <clears throat> Uh, in, in June of 1977, a Newsweek preview of the fall season, written by Harry Waters, panned the show uh, while mischaracterizing some of the basic plot elements and often exaggerating the reports of sexual conduct. Despite having not seen the pilot, he had not seen the pilot, Waters called the show a sex farce and claimed erroneously that the show included a scene of a Catholic priest being seduced in a confessional. <laughs> huge relig religious protest and notes of standards and practices made this show notorious okay even a gay group was concerned and, and, and sent concerns because they did not know how Jody and his boyfriend would be played on the show <laughs> Jody, if, if you don't know he's he was pay, played by the now famous actor Billy Crystal but at that time was only known for stand-up. He was a stand-up comedian, and he was asked to come on the show to play the Jody. We have that made clip. his career. We have we have a clip uh, with Jody, and it's uh, probably I, I don't know if it's from the pilot or right around there. So go ahead and, and show this clip, Mark. Well, Jody, so you're going to get married, huh? Yeah, it uh, looks that way. Isn't that nice? Yeah. I guess that means you're not gay. No, Aunt Jessica, it doesn't. Hmm. You know, Jody, when we were younger, there was no such thing as homosexuals. <laughs> yes, there were, Aunt Jessica. The homosexuals go way back in history. Who? Alexander the Great was gay. Uh, Plato was gay. Plato? <laughs> Mickey Mouse's dog. Yeah, I knew that was. Gay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Mr. Prince. And Jessica, would you be very offended if I didn't? Continue this conversation. <laughs> oh, Mary. Yes, what, Jess? Did you ask Eric B about his affair? What? <laughs> Did you ask Bert about his affair? <laughs> no. Listen, I know you two mean to be helpful, but uh, it's my marriage, and I have to handle this my own way. You're right, Mary. You're absolutely right. Mickey Mouse had a gay dog? <laughs> you didn't know? First I heard of it. <laughs> Goofy was his lover. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, that, that is that, funny. Yeah, so that's just a tidbit of soap, okay? Uh, and, and that, what an amazing show. What an amazing show. And, and, um, and it dealt with some serious issues, like when he goes in for the sex change operation and then his boyfriend breaks up with him, he commits tries to commit suicide. Yeah, I mean, and that I, wasn't heard of either. At the time, exactly. You know? I mean, there was some serious um, issues dealt with on that show, too, not just the comedy. Yeah. yeah, and, I'm, I'm and, and Kath, Catherine Hillman, who I absolutely adore, was 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 uh, who played Jessica, um, uh, who also guest starred later on there um, on the offshoot, the spinoff of that show. Um, she was just fabulous. I, I have a short clip of an interview with her about soap too. Which Mark, if you could play number seven. Oh 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 oh! You didn't uh, warn me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a great show. I think that I handled doing that first show in a kind of fun, 
joyous way. And because the show had been criticized so much before it came on the air, I thought, well, better have a good time while this is on because it's probably, you know, a few shows and it'll be gone. And then it lasted a whole season and we got a pickup and I thought, oh boy. This is fun. For one thing, I made more money than I'd ever made in my life working on stage. <laughs> and that was very, very nice because it allowed me to buy a home, which was wonderful. And the, the thing that was a little disconcerting, because you know you can work on the stage all your life and nobody ever recognizes you on the street. but. In television, it is so pervasive. It's so in your house and sometimes in your bedroom at night that you become an individual to people. And it was a little odd to be in Nordstrom's and have somebody come up and say, Hey, Catherine, how are you? I, I saw the show show last night, it was funny, to, to call you by your first name, and they, yeah, how dare from you. publicity, they know about you, that you're married, and uh, that you come from Texas, and that kind of thing was really amazing to me, but pe people were so, so nice and so pleasant toward me. And I, I realized that I had a wonderful job because I made them laugh. And laughter is such a marvelous thing, really. It's such a healing thing. That's one of the reasons I've always enjoyed doing comedy. Wasn't she on Who's the Boss? She was on Who's the Boss. Yes, yes the she was. She yeah. played uh, Judith Light's mom. Yeah. So just another note about soap. The the dummy Bob, yes, is in the Smithsonian. Is he really? Yeah, he, cool. I just was reading about it. He is. Where did I put it? Here he goes. He has been. It was put in the Smithsonian's Institute of Collections of Pop Culture Icons. Yeah, that's, that's where he hangs cool. out. That's where he hangs out. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so so unfortunately, the show's notoriety didn't end. Okay, it kept on going, and you had these religious groups, and you had these other groups. And they were writing letters and writing letters and writing letters. And the, the, it scared, you know, scared the sponsors. And the sponsors started to back out. They had already mm -hmm. they had already had to cut the rates initially to get the show on the air to, because there was so much flack. So in the fourth season, uh, after the end of the fourth season, they ABC decided not to renew. And so the show was left on so many cliffhangers. Oh yeah. Don't know how don't know how any of it ended. Okay. So and that sucks. So, you know, things would be very different today. That show would be considered very tame today. Okay. <laughs> but, but back then, that was, that was, you know, notorious. And that is Soap, one of my favorite shows. 93 episodes, amazingly, uh, considering all they went through <clears throat> to get that, get that made. You might notice and recognize some of those people on there. The, Dinah Manoff is, is on there. Uh, she, you know, she had a bit character that ends up getting killed off. Very sad. I cried when she, when she was murdered, you know, and yeah. she was kind of a jerk, you know, but, um, it was sad. It was really sad and how, how well they did that. And yeah. the guy there, um, in the middle, that's Robert Guillaume and yep. his, his character was so, he was like one of the standouts that he got his own show. Oh yeah. <laughs> and so we're going to talk about Benson. Benson. Uh, it started in uh, September of 1979. Uh, he, after two years of him being on soap, they gave him his own show where he goes to work for the governor, and um, who's related show, to Jessica. Yes, that's right. That's that right. was an important side note for the first couple of episodes. I totally mm -hmm. forgot about that because, but I knew that she had guest starred on there a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, <sighs> so. Um, he plays Benson Dubois. He's he's uh, working for the governor, uh, played by James Noble, 
And it, uh, you know, he uh, has, you know, it's kind of like it deals with the conflicts of what's going on in the in, in the governor's mansion. And plus, sometimes they have these uh, cute uh, little side stories with uh, Melissa Gold, which is the older sister of Tracy Gold, uh, who was on Growing Pains for years. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this show um, was... Uh, it, uh, Robert Guillaume ended up winning an outstanding lead actor for a comedy series in 1985 for this show. And it lasted a bit longer than Soap did. It lasted for seven seasons, 158 mm -hmm. episodes. But um, why don't we go ahead and show a clip that I, I, I just stumbled across and I'm like, oh, I have to use this one because I didn't even know who this other guy was. <laughs> and, but now everybody knows who's, who he is. <laughs> Good cheer. Frankie's here. Frankie, what do you want? <laughs> I brought a letter over from Miss Krause, and I thought since I was here, I... You'd pitch a few jokes to the governor. Frankie, sit down. But Benson... Sit, 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 sit! <laughs> Frankie, let me tell you something. I like you. Now, that may come as a surprise to you. I know it does to me. You're a good man. Messenger and a nice kid. I like everything about you except your jokes. But they're funny. They're not funny, Frankie. The governor is not going to hire you. He does not need jokes in his speeches. His speeches are jokes. <laughs> but Benson, I have a dream. Then wake up. <laughs> it's no cr crime not to be funny. Lots of very important people weren't funny. But Benson... Frankie! Don't bother to get up. I can throw myself out. Hi, Frankie. You want to hear a joke? Not if it's one of yours. Washi? <laughs> yeah, so that who crazy is that young kid. Man? I don't know. I, 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 a show about something. I can't. I think it was about nothing. I can't, I can't remember it. Who was that? Can you believe? Can you believe that that now, Jerry Seinfeld aside, us Star Trek fans, how cool is it that Ethan Phillips and Renee Aubergeois uh, worked together on worked together on Benson years before Deep Space Nine or well, um, I mean, remember Rene Aubergeois was also famous because he was in the movie Mash. Yeah, that's true. Okay. He was Father Mulcahy. He was. I totally forgot about that. Yeah. So he had but, he had some fame going for him. But so yeah, so that's so yeah, so this show went on for a long time, but it was never like, oh, I can't wait to go home and watch Benson. I mean, it was just a show that you know it was funny, it was well written, and it had staying power. Unfortunately. And, uh, and, and you know, the thing of the cool thing about Benson is that. He, you know, he started off just being like, you know, in charge of like, you know, the cleaning and stuff. And he ended up becoming lieutenant governor in the later episodes of the mm -hmm. show. You know, so, you know, he, he, you know. And they, it, and they, really and they cool. canceled the show on a cliffhanger. Did they? Yes, because Benson, it was election night and Benson was slated to win the election to become governor. But they canceled the show, oh so you never God. found out if he won the election or not. I did not know that. Yeah, big controversy. A lot of people unhappy about it. The critics were pissed. I think he would have won <laughs> if season eight had happened. <clears throat> Why don't we go ahead and play that interview that we have? Uh, clip number nine. Benson was never a spectacular performer like Cosby or many other shows. Benson was always the quiet hit. It was seen by many people as a one trick pony. The white guy is smarter than all the, the black guy is smarter than all the white guys. That's, we know what that, that is. And uh, that's all it's about. Uh, to me, it was never about that. It was simply about an African American being able to stand on his own two feet and trade 
jabs, blows, or whatever it was with other people and still stand on his own two feet and not needing any help from anybody. If I want to be lieutenant governor, I'll go to the night school, take law. I can do it. It's possible. Um, if this is America, and anything is possible, and it should have been, it should be possible for me. Excellent. Excellent. Very so, well. So, after two hits, you can't always have a hit. You, sometimes you have a bomb, okay? And the oh. next one is uh, one that I don't think if you, either one of you probably watched. If you did, I'll be surprised. Um, I like Diana Cardova. She played uh, Corinne on Soap. Um, and I liked her character. She's the one who was trying to, she was in love with her priest. Okay. And people really liked her on that show. So they decided to write a show for her called I'm a Big Girl Now. Okay. That, you know, that that's sort of reminds me of Toys R Us for some reason. Um, <laughs> it, it was on ABC for um, a little under one season, 19 episodes. Um, Susan Harris um, produced the show, wrote the show, and um, she was playing, once again, you know, it was big to be the divorced young woman living on her own, uh, but she was living with her dad, played by Danny Thomas. Okay. You know, I see a trend here. You know, if you needed, if you needed somebody, you know, let's let's bring in Danny. You know, so um, she sung the theme song for "I'm a Big Girl Now." Uh, let's go ahead and play that clip. Rush fire continues. Film at eleven. Thanks, Paul. When I was young, I played the games of childhood. As a child would, I used to play. I'm a big girl now, but time slips by like a day. There's Paul again. Thanks, Paul. So, did either one of you ever see that show? Oh, no. never heard of it. <laughs> I did not until the show. <laughs> never heard of it. Okie dokie. So, that's oh, that. One. Did did I read this right? Does Mike say he watched that one too? Yeah. Did you what? Did you see? I'm a big girl now. It's it's Mike, guys. It's Mike. The man needs a <laughs> needed a life back then. I swear. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that, yeah, well, that, you know, I, I I don't know how I missed it, you know. Dinah Manoff, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, okay. uh, Dinah Manoff went on to play uh, with, um, uh, she she played on Empty Nest, which we'll talk about next time. Ah. Um, um, the last show we're going to do is a show called It's a Living which is actually one of my favorite sitcoms. Of we were just discussing it in the Connor household. Were you really? Yes. I think it's playing right now on some cable show because it's it's had so many episodes. It's one of those that you can just, you know, keep running. It's, it, it had it had over 120 episodes. Yeah, but yeah. I, the the this, early episodes were great. This is this is an interesting this is an interesting uh, how how this happened this show. Um, it, it's a living also known as making a living uh, was set in a restaurant 
uh, on the top of the Bonaventure Hotel in Los Angeles. Oh, wow. And it originally aired on ABC from 1980 to 1982. Um, it originally starred Susan Sullivan, um, who's been in everything. This woman has acted in everything. Uh, she was in Rich Man, Poor Man, yeah. Falcon Crest, and one of my favorite shows, Castle. She played Castle's mom. Yep. And uh, and if you look her up, you'll see that there's a long list of uh, shows she's been in for a very long time. She's just great. But she was only in the first season. Um, the real hit of the show uh, initially was Ann Jillian. Oh, yes. Who played, uh, she played Cassie. And she was a wisecracking um, waitress. It always had some kind of comeback. You know, she was... Sort of like uh, the flow of you know Mel Steiner, but with the you know without the Southern accent. You know, yeah, she but had she had that, that sexy haircut. Yeah. So 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 yes. So that show. Um, what happened? It, it ended up getting canceled, and uh, after after a couple of seasons, and the weirdest thing happened. It uh, it can't got canceled in 1982, and then in 1985 it made a comeback. In first run syndication. Yep. And and Jillian was there for the first couple of years it was back on. Um, and but most of the cast was gone, except for um, uh, except for the Marion Mercer who played the uh, who ran who ran the restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, Paul Crapel who was the pianist, and Barry Youngfellow one of the waitresses. Okay. So th those are the three that stayed on through the whole entire run of the series. Now, um, wait a minute. Hang on a second here. I'm going to have to just. Oh, I'm that. sorry. And the actress who played Dot. Dot, too. Dot yeah. was also there. There you for, go. For, for, for the whole show. There you go. That's Gail Edwards. She was on for the whole run also. And um, when, it, when it came, when it, uh, after Ann Jillian left, um, and I think it was due to her health, health problems at yep. the time. Um. Which actually, she ended up doing a movie about it, um, about her breast cancer, and it was like everybody, you know, it was the Angelian story, and that, uh, you know, people didn't talk about breast cancer back then, so that was a big deal, the Angelian story. Well, she was also a former child star. Was she really? Yeah, yeah. Angelian started as a child star. So, so like I said, so, we, yeah, we so talked about this in the Connor household the, uh, a couple weeks ago. When she when she left, uh, Cheryl Lee Ralph came on as Ginger, and Ginger was a great character. She was a singer, kind of kind of a wisecracker too, and um, another young actress uh, making her start in the world. Uh, Crystal Bernard came on as Amy, and uh, probably you know her best as her, for her role in Wings, which ran forever. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. <laughs> right after, right after Cheers. Yeah. Um, so um, I really enjoy the show. It's a well-written show, and that's why it's had staying power, and you can find it, you know, somewhere on cable, uh, somewhere everywhere. So let's go ahead and play the clip that I have from the show. Yeah, this clip is, you know, a little bit, raunchy for my taste um but thank you for choosing it <laughs> okay hi hi <laughs> hi what's the matter uh you came to work in your outfit so it, it is a little suggestive for streetwear oh please i just saw a girl roller skating down sunset boulevard wearing three medium-sized baggies and a hat <laughs> so don't talk to me about being suggestive Suggestive. <laughs> Thank you for the lift, Manuel. Hi, Lois. Hi, Hi, Jan. Boy, what a day. My car overheated on the freeway. I got oil in my hair. My radiator leaked all over my, my dress. Yeah, well, try not to let it get you down. <laughs> Bad life. How'd it go? Oh, it was terrific. I mean, it was incredible. Absolutely incredible, just amazing. I don't believe it. Hey, you got the commercial. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. maybe. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. I mean, they really liked me. I mean, they really, really liked me. So maybe. I mean, who can tell? They narrowed it down to four girls, and I'm one of them. Oh, uh, honey, that's wonderful. Oh, just think. Next week, I could be the new Dodge girl. <laughs> you got a better shot at being the new Dodge. 
song goes, yeah. I think we better get moving. Okay. Wait a minute. As I remember, you have an exam tomorrow. As I remember, there's still a dentist convention at the hotel. 400 men flossing before coffee. Look, we covered for Dot yesterday. We'll cover for you today. Crack those books. You don't mind? Why should I mind? Last night I got my teeth cleaned for free. <laughs> wow. And that aired on and that aired on ABC. <laughs> yeah. Well, before it was Disney. So <laughs> <laughs> But but boy, how you know, how times changed in a few years from soap, which was on ABC and like Wah! and then talking about, you know, getting your teeth cleaned. You know, a few years later on It's a Living, which it, that's probably why it got canceled was because it was also had that kind of raunch. But uh, it went to syndication and, you know, it's it stayed there for quite a yeah, while. But even it, even in 80, 81, 82, that so-called raunch wasn't that raunchy, you know. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, it was in syndication from 84 to 85. And so and that's all I have for right now. We, we stopped at 1980. So the next time I talk about these um, uh people this production company will be going into the huge 80s era of television excellent good job i think uh we did do a production company show before i think i did i think it was on quinn martin right yes you did yeah, we you also did, did um we also did uh the king of uh, disaster films what's his name erwin allen erwin, erwin oh, that's allen. right yeah yeah awesome great job uh, uh i enjoy that um the monster enjoys that as well. Uh, oh, we're at the damn dirty ape thing time. Yeah, yeah. Get your filthy. Here he comes. You know but um, what what better way of showing a little bit of classic TV doing classic t television SmackDown? Uh, Rose, that was excellent. If you guys uh, recall everything that Rose showed, I will kind of go through here. Gallery, these are the shows that um, the majority of us did not know the majority of. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, Mike knows everything. The little yeah. girl that was on that show passed away in 2015. My and I'm a big girl now. I, I think Mike discovered grass in probably the 90s. <laughs> Why isn't he doing this with us? He I, should be on here doing a show. <laughs> he should. And, and I, I mean, if he, he knows all this stuff, you know, he rivals Jerome in, in, in the knowledge. Hey, listen, yeah. I admit freely, I did not have a life as a kid. Okay, so you know. <laughs> Well, I did. <coughs> I, I I was always a multitasker, and even when I needed to play outside and watch Saturday morning cartoons or even primetime TV, I got it all in. I, I did it all. It, it, I was sad, but uh, that was a great job, Rose. You did a thank, thank excellent you, job on that one. Can't wait for your show tomorrow. And speaking of tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, we do a number of shows on this, uh, this network, NBL Entertainment Group. And tomorrow, you're going to have, I need a, a you're really going to have to hold me down. Because I honestly, <laughs> think if I did the cold shower first, I think I can make it through. No, no, okay. no. Do, do you We're know that Rachel said I did this show just to butter you up? Yeah. Like, I don't know like, why you need to. Mark. Yes, okay? you, you, you did said. not have, I had no clue in all honesty. This is brilliant. And ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know Rose's show tomorrow for Saturday morning cartoons, let's give you a little bit of a preview here. <sighs> it's just the many lives of Velma oh. Dinkley. I you was know, gonna... I, I, I'm going to call Mark's neighbor and basically have <laughs> them come over and duct tape him to his chair. It's Velma all morning long, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> and if you don't get enough of those knees, then you ought to need some more. I don't know. Boy, it, my goodness, doing that show. I I thought doing the the Whit Thomas Harris show yeah. was 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 exhausting. That yeah. killed me. Yeah, so sure please come watch this show tomorrow because there is I, so much I learned and so much so I had far, to dig into. So it far, is. It's, I am I am very impressed with the information that you came up with the content that you have provided. I worship you. I applaud <laughs> you. I thank you so much. And I don't mind repeating all of this at the end of tomorrow's show 
But did I mention tomorrow's show is going to be on Velma, ladies and gentlemen? If, if, I, I, yes. I, I think it was Two mentioned days, somewhere. Five hours of downloading and editing alone, oh. not including all the stuff I dug up for this show. The, so oh. please <laughs> go watch so, this show. This is, I might actually eat ice cream for breakfast tomorrow morning while this show is going on. Just so you know, and get your hands off me. Oh, what did he say? What did he, I don't know, something about a grocery list. What did he, was he talking to me? He can talk. Oh, my God. You can talk. Oh, oh. Yes, and, and if you are a fan of classic anime, watch our show tomorrow night, Roses and Reactions. We are doing Neon Genesis Evangelion. We're going to get into the thick of things tomorrow on that show. Now, I know okay. a lot of people don't know that, aren't very familiar with it. I don't think... Right. Uh, Mark has ever heard of, heard of it before until I, I, I watched one episode the other night. I watched one episode. It's did you watch the Netflix dub? Did you watch the Netflix one? Yes, I did. Okay, so that's you the watched only one the I Netflix. had access to. That's the did, only did one I had the dub? access to. That's the, the only dub one. The Netflix... sub? Wait a minute, that's the only one I had access to. That's yeah. Well, that's D did you watch the dub or the sub? The dub. The dub. Okay. So I can understand your mixed feelings about the first episode because the dub is not the greatest, okay? That's right. the new Netflix dub. Wait we're going to get minute, it. We're going to break how, it down. How, how would I know that the you dub wouldn't. is not the greatest? You wouldn't. I saw I, – I, 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 Rachel has me watch – we watch most of our anime in, in Japanese, okay? Japanese, right. So original. Yes, yes. Original. There's only a couple okay. that we, we, we mix up. Uh, yeah. every now and then because because some of the dubs are gone off but okay. but Netflix ended up finally getting this show nobody it was you couldn't find it in America for years Netflix right. yeah. bought the rights to it and instead of using the dub from the original series back back uh in the back in 2005 or whenever it came out they redubbed the whole thing okay. and we're, there's a lot of controversy about this new dub we're gonna get into it all tomorrow night. So uh, I, join us, please. I don't have a dog in this fight, so it, yeah. It's, join I'm, us, I'm, join us as we as we break down the show. What I how it became my favorite anime <laughs> of all time, and why and why the show ended up why it originally meant so much to Rachel, and wow. uh, two totally different reasons. Yeah. And uh, so we'll get well, into how all many episodes? Slow down, slow down, young lady. How many Sorry. episodes are there? There's a total of 26 plus a oh, movie, not no. including, <laughs> not including the, re, not including the re that they've, they've redone the show. I, we have, uh, I have not sorry. watched the new one. Sorry. I'm busy that year. Um, <laughs> good God. 26 episodes. That's 26 hours basically, right? Is it an hour? Well, and they're half hours and, and, oh, and there was a, and there was a movie. Okay. So, so 13, 13, 13 hours. Huh? Hmm. Hmm. I don't think I can make it by next by tomorrow night. What am I saying? Um, oh, well, we're not yeah. gonna, we're not the show's not gonna be 13 hours long, so yeah. Well, yeah, I hope not, but um, 12 yeah, and a half but, minimum, yeah. You know, there's a, a lot of people yeah. who can't do subtitles, Mike, and and we understand that, but uh, if you can, if you can, you know, it's it, can, it, it loses a uh, lot in translation. We, you know? we debate that issue at work, uh, in all honesty. I'm sorry, but if you can actually watch a movie and read it at the same time, you're a pro. Okay, I'm a pro. There are some movies you have no, not just movies, but shows you have to have subtitles on. Oh yeah, right? absolutely. You're rewinding until you got it, and I don't have time for that. I like to know exactly. You do. What you do enough. Said. You do enough subtitles. It becomes yeah. a habit, and you can you you you're able to read yeah, them almost exactly. at a subconscious level. Right. I'll you tell you something. You know, I, I think part of the reason why my son's vocabulary scores went up is he st he started watching shows subtitles. subtitles. Yep. Sure, sure. I, I yeah, love I, can see that. I love subtitles. I think they're very very valuable to understanding the entire content of anything you're watching. I really mm -hmm. do. Um, you know, dialogue is very important and you know how big I am on writing. And that's one of the reasons why I have subtitles on. It's like, okay, what hey, did he say? When I, when I watched, when I watched on uh, Disney plus, I watched Hamilton. Uh -huh. I put the subtitles on. I did I got too. everything. I did too. I put, I put the subtitles on. I, I don't know why people don't, but that's okay. They think but that helped. Distracting. That helped with that. The way that, that songs are, that helped. Yeah. I mean, I totally get it. Some people can only focus on one thing at a time. I, I you know, I, 
those of us that watch subtitles are obviously capable of focusing on multiple things at the same time. So, you know, it's it's it works for some people. It doesn't work for others. So that's my my t- take on subtitles. But oh. yeah, I know. Anyway, no, yes, come come watch the shows tomorrow, and tomorrow morning you'll be in for a treat. If you love Scooby Doo, I want to marry her. It. I want to marry her just to get rid of that stupid ass name, last name. So yeah. <laughs> by by the yeah. way, Rose, I'm loving that picture of uh, Rachel in the Rose on the Rose reaction. Oh, the Rose. Oh, that's a great picture. That is uh. Whoop. Oh. You, you know, my son, my son took those for us. He, we, we did like a, a photo shoot right outside the house. And yeah. that is a great picture of your daughter. He, yeah. Thank you so much. That, yeah. that, that is, that is good. Okay. So, Hey guys, thank you guys so much for joining us for classic uh, television Smackdown. Remember guys, we do this every other Friday, not every week. So, you know, we're here tonight. Don't see it. Don't wait for us next week. But wait for us the week uh, after that, whose turn it's going to be. I think it's uh, Jerome's, right? Yep. Girl, girl, and girl, I have girl. the show all ready to go. Oh, you want to talk about it now? Or you want to wait? No, yeah, we'll I wait. I want to surprise some people. I, I like okay. this one. I, I want to surprise this one. Excellent. Excellent. I'll send and... it to you after the show, though. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going to concentrate on tomorrow night. I think everything's loaded for tomorrow night's or tomorrow morning's show. I just now have to right. put it into the studio. So we're all good on that. Um, what? Yeah, I don't know who. I'm gonna, I'm gonna smack you with. Oh a yeah. Wet, yeah, I think so. I think I'm we're gonna, gonna have to smack him also. A sourdough piece of bread. I'm gonna smack you with a with butter on it. How dare you, you little punk? Anyway, so insults my girlfriend like that. Nobody gets away with that. Oh, Velma. Anyway, so hey, once again, thank you for joining us for this incredible show that we do every other Friday. Tomorrow morning is going to be absolutely glorious. It's going to be a beautiful day. <laughs> beautiful day, I say. That yeah, cold anyway, shower, Mark. Cold I'm just shower. Gonna, I'm going to feel great going to the grocery <laughs> store tomorrow. I might be singing, <laughs> singing through the produce. <laughs> yeah, Mark's going to yeah. Mark's going to need a cigarette after your show tomorrow. There, Rose. Man, I'm going to pinch me a melon. Anyway, so that <laughs> thank you so much for tonight's show. We'll see you guys first thing tomorrow morning. And, of course, tomorrow evening. Come back after you've uh, done your day shopping or whatever. Two great shows tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Out of the blue of the western sky comes Sky King. As we say here in the West.